So I just ran out of red urushi, and I thought that was a good opportunity to make a video, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing to make it uh, right now. So first off, when you're working with urushi, it's like poison ivy, so it can give you very itchy rashes. So I usually wear rubber gloves. I'm not super sensitive, but I'm a little bit sensitive. Some people are more sensitive than, than I am. Other people are less, but apparently about 70% of the population gets a rash, so it's best to be safe if you don't know. Um, also, when I'm doing, normally I don't need this, but today I'm going to use a mask. The reason being that I'm going to have a lot of Udushis kind of spread out over a large area, so there's going to be a lot of surface area, and uh, the Udushi all kind of comes out like, like steam from water. You don't see it, but it's all over the air, and it's going to kind of hit you in the face, and it's going to make your eyes itchy, and it's going to go into your body and come out in different soft areas of your body that you don't want to be itchy. So I'll use a mask. Now, when you make colored Udushi, you start with... Let me go. This is Shuai Urushi. Shu means red. I means uh, to kind of synthesize or put things together. So this is Urushi that's made for putting colors into. The difference is that it's a little bit translucent, this Urushi, so the color comes through a little bit more. It's also has a little bit of oil added into it, which gives it kind of like a sheen, a shine, a shiny sheen when it's finished. So I recently found out that when you mix colors in, in what I'm using, you want to use less than normal. If you're making red urushi, like the kind that you would see in this sort of a shakuhachi, I don't know if the color's going to come through well or not. This is kind of very, how you can't see it at all, can you? Let me get a flashlight for you. No, maybe not. All right, you'll, you'll just have to take my word for it. This is a very kind of bright red color. It's a celebratory red. It's, it's kind of fancy. It's like not your everyday color. I don't really do that. I like to have an everyday color of red. When you make this kind of red, you basically use half powder and half urushi. You use almost the same amount. However, <clears throat> I use something that they call bengara. It's a Bengala, it means Bengal, because it used to come from Bengal. That's where they got it from originally. It's like a really interesting, old, and natural way to do it. Uh, it's made of basically iron, oxidized iron powder. That's what gives it the red color. But it's not a bright red. In fact, once it's finished, it's not even as red as this. It's kind of a uh, dark, deep, calm earthy red, which I really like. It's the sort of red that you can use every day. It's not like a special situation. It's just the idea is to bring a little bit of joy into your everyday life, um, but not, not to the uh, extent that it becomes unreasonable, because then nothing is special if everything is too special, right? Let's make everything a little bit special. So you can't use as much as this as you would of different colors. The reason is that it's kind of rougher. It's like a coarse grind of coffee instead of a fine grind, right? So instead of a one-to-one, -one, I'm going to use about one part, uh, what do I call this, powdering? They call it ganryo in Japanese. I'm not really sure what to say in English. I'm going to use one part of this coloring to three parts of urushi. So I'm going to use about one-third my tube right here, I have about 25 grams of Udushi, so I'm going to use about 8 grams of powder. There we go. 8 times 3 is 24. I know that's not exactly the third, but it's, it's not so picky. Um, I talked to somebody who sells Udushi recently, and he said his suggestion was actually when you're using Bengara, don't even use, don't use one to one for sure, don't even use a third, you should use about a fourth, four parts Udushi to one part coloring. 
Uh, however, when I use this, I like to thin it out with a little bit of extra Udushi to, to kind of make it just what I want for whatever application I'm using it for. So I'm going to use 3 to 1 right now. So I'll turn this down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I just measured out with my handy kitchen scale 8 grams of Udushi. Oh, bye. Coloring. Bengara, as they say. Oh, I use this handy uh, bamboo spatula that I made. Isn't that nice? So now I'm going to put on my mask. <clears throat> and we're going to begin. You don't want to start with too much Urushi. You just kind of Put a bit of that on top, and I'm going to knead that together and see how it goes. Alright, so there we go. We're starting to take shape a little bit. I'll bring this a little closer so you can see it better. That's what's happening right now. And it's kind of more like a paste or a putty than a liquid at this point. And that's really what we're going for. Because we're going to have to work this over for a while to make sure that all the uh, iron filaments in there, all of the powder, especially the uh, rougher parts, get kind of crushed and become a little bit finer so that they can really work their way into the urushi. What happens if you use too much of this, or if you don't knead it enough, is that as the urushi dries, when you paint it on something, as it dries, the uh, thicker parts of the iron start to emerge on the surface, and you get this kind of like very matte finish along with a powder that starts to rub off. Um, it's really not the end of the world. Once you rub the powder off, you still have a decent finish underneath, but it's kind of inconvenient. And also, theoretically at least, it's going to make your finish a little bit weaker because it's going to be a little bit porous to some extent, I would expect. Though I haven't really done any research as far as that goes, so I can't tell you for absolute certain that that's really the case, but it's what I would expect. So, here's where we need to knead it a little bit. Some people even go ahead and use hammers at this stage, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to whack it a bit and get those iron filaments really kind of pulverized in there, okay? So here we go. And we want to do this for about 30 minutes or so. So I'm not going to subject you to all of it, of course. But I'm going to be pounding and kneading for about 30 minutes, so we'll pause it here. Alright, so here we've been doing it for a while. Uh, aside from pounding it, you can also kind of... I don't know what the terminology is. Scrape it? Squish it around? Squish it around? Like so. Um, it's like you're kneading it. Some people have different ways of doing it. Some people use kind of a wooden, uh, it looks like a wooden, almost like a wooden bar, like a rolling pin, pin, but it's stationary. Instead of rolling, it just slides back and forth over it to kind of grind everything nice and smooth and um, encourage all the coloring to mix well with the urushi. Um, so far, I've had really the best luck with the hammer method, which is not mine alone. I can't take credit for it. Lots of urushi people in the area also do this. Uh, you can actually get away with a lot less urushi in it to begin with than I did. I put a little bit too much, but there's no helping it now. Um, even if you make it almost like dry, like kind of like a cake of dough is, is plenty for the initial mixing stage. <clears throat> And once you mix it the first time, you want to let it sit for a while, about an hour, or at least. Uh, most people recommend overnight, not everybody does that. But once you've let it sit for a while, you spend another 
20 or 30 minutes panning again. By the way, if you do let it sit for a while, in the interim, if you want to cover it with plastic wrap or something, uh, if you have more than this, put it in a bowl and then put plastic wrap over the bowl and kind of squish the plastic wrap so it uh, sticks to the surface of the udushi. If you don't do that, and especially if it's a warm or humid day, it's going to dry before you get to do anything with it. And what's the fun in that? No fun at all is the answer. No fun at all. Anyway, once you've done that, you take it back out and you squish it for a while again. All right, so I finished my initial phase of pounding and scraping and stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and work in the rest of the urushi now. Okay, and just put that whole thing in there. I'm sure it doesn't hurt to do this bit by bit, but um, that's not what I'm doing today. As you can see, this Udushi has already been around for about a year, so I'm using it up now. When I first got it, it was even more translucent, but you can see it's already kind of starting to cure, so if I don't use it now, it won't be any good, which is part of the reason that we're doing this today. We don't want to use any Urushi, it's... Uh, we don't want to waste any Urushi, we don't want to use plenty, we don't want to waste it though. Make sure we get all uh, every last drop out of there. All right, <clears throat> then we'll go ahead and mix it together and work it in. Okay, so everything's nice and mixed. It's been massaged well again. Everybody's happy. I've scraped the bottom well to make sure that everything is kind of, you know, there's no clumps sitting there or anything like that. In this stage, if you do get some hair or junk, I don't know. I, I didn't, I, I don't make a point of putting hair in my Udushi. But if you do happen to get some dirt or something in it, you don't have to worry about it because you're going to filter it later on. But still, it's best right, not, not to do that if possible. <clears throat> So now I'm going to put it in a bowl and let it sit either for several hours or overnight. Probably overnight in this case because my daughter is going to be home soon. And she's going to want to play. So anyway, here I am scraping this off. Go ahead, cover Rushi real nice here. All right, so I'm gonna put the plastic wrap on top of there, squeeze it first around the edges so it goes low enough, and kind of like a as much as I can, an airtight space down in here. So that the Udushi doesn't dry out while I'm letting it sit. Um, also, fortunately, right now I'm doing it. I'm doing this in winter, um, so that it's cold and dry, which are perfect conditions for Udushi not curing. Udushi does not dry like paint. It doesn't want dry places. It actually cures as it reacts with the moisture in the air. So if there's a lot of heat and moisture, it cures quickly. If there's low heat, low moisture, it cures very slowly. So, as it is right here, I'm going to put it aside overnight. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and clean off my tools now. Let's see, screen savers on there. 
you can use a couple of things to thin out urushi. I use kerosene. You can also use um, turpentine, which is actually more natural. Turpentine is made from uh, the roots of pine trees. It's kind of an extract from the roots. So you would think being natural it would be less caustic, but that's not actually the case. It's actually very bad for you to breathe turpentine. Um, and it's not good for you to breathe kerosene either, so you want to ventilate the room when you're doing this kind of thing. But um, the advantage to kerosene is that uh, it's cheap. In Japan, I don't know about other places, but you can get a liter of kerosene for about 50 yen, which is like 50 cents in American dollars. So it's wicked cheap, and if you use a liter of uh, kerosene in a year for your urushi, that's, I mean, you're using too much. Like, you're not going to go through it that quickly. So, I mean, you can get a year supply for less than a dollar. So, isn't that wonderful? And that is what most of the people around here tend to use. There's some cases, some varieties of urushi respond better to turpentine, but, uh, well, that's another story. Stuff that we're using here has no problem with kerosene, so that's what we're using. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. And for my Rudishi or kerosene garbage, I have this steel coffee can. It's huge, and it's good to put things in that might burst into flames at some point, because you don't want to be putting flammable things in the regular garbage where they could cause fires, or at least I don't think you do. I certainly don't. If you do, that's your prerogative, but don't tell anybody that I told you to do it, because I'm not. And this, by the way, people, I, this is acrylic, you can use glass, but just like a kind of a glass sheet or acrylic, thick acrylic sheet makes a good workspace for uh, doing various things with Urushi. Alright, and there we go. So, I'm going to show you the rest later on. Tomorrow we're going to kind of massage the Urushi a little bit more, and then we're going to filter it out and put it in the tube, and it'll be ready to use.